All right, I will start on magnetism. Okay, before going to magnetism, I think uh, one or two application what we were discussing for um, you know coordination chemistry I will show in here. Okay, sometimes we don't realize that the simple high spin, low spin configuration can give you something very very important. For example, let's say you have a complex which is low spin it has one color low spin you know what sort of transition you do expect it can vary depending on the compound let's say you have a given compound the compound is low spin if you give the temperature if you heat the complex what you can have is you can convert the low spin compound into high spin because low spin means what those spin cannot go in the eg orbital let's say t2 g to eg orbital now as soon as you put heat or let's say laser light some of the spin some of those electron will be now traveling to the eg orbital t2 g to eg now the color of that compound will be different it could be white to red red to white or whatever it is right so by changing these something like display you see lot of these color display you know in big audience or big auditorium or even display in the on roadside somewhere else so basically let's say it's it's one color the moment laser light is you know shining on this display what happens it may be showing a particular thing particular let's say name written whatever you want to happy birthday wish that something you have wished me that can be written over here on the board just by signing those laser lights that is nothing but changing high spin to low spin configuration lot of things can be done and it has been done okay without realizing we are seeing those okay other form of this sort of high spin low spin configuration can be used in your money card or atm let's say you have a debit card you have 10000 rupees every time you pick up money let's say first time you pick up 2000 rupees from atm machine right now so what can happen is a selected amount of laser light can be irradiated on your card because 2000 rupees will let's say be selecting by default how much laser light to sign thereby some of the complex will go from high spin to low spin or low spin to high spin let's say low spin to high spin specifically you are putting light so low spin to high spin will be going next time when you are punching the card again the machine can read how much money you have left let's say after 10000 minus 2000 8000 this way let's say at the end you have 1000 rupees you want to draw 5000 rupees from that instrument will not allow so these are also technique these are different ways take advantage of this complex this is something one paper has already come and only problem is so far this technique is little bit expensive that's why we don't see it in the market right now but soon enough it will be make hopefully made cheaper and then you can you know the technology itself is coming expensive that's why it's not in the market but in principle it can be done so lot of the practical application just by signing light since just by signing light you can change the electronic configuration of a compound of course you have to choose the right compound right wavelength and right everything let's say but once you have that right combination you can do wonder something like this right also other thing of course you know that you have a colorless compound you add something high spin to let's say low spin complex form or low spin to high spin complex form something like um, you cannot read here this is a iron aqua complex which is colorless you the moment you add phenanthrolin to it high spin complex becomes low spin complex color changes okay another so this is of course sometime you can use it for magic lot of other application you can have simple color change other things for example 
if you have let us say this red complex, okay, red complex is due to the low spin complex, red complex is due to the low spin complex for example, you st are starting with that, the you are heating it. Okay. So, this is the temperature initially it was 250 Kelvin okay. that is almost like room temperature let us say. Okay. You start from there, you keep on heating nothing happening, nothing happening select at a selected temperature now the low spin to high spin transition is going on. Then what you will see all of a sudden at a particular temperature this red compound is becoming white. Okay. So, at that let us say this is 325 this is becoming white. Now, that white compound you can try to cool down it will not follow exactly same pathway because the relaxation of the spin like spin was up spin has to go down that relaxation need not be necessarily following the same path. You have excited something the relaxation means coming back from the you know the E g level to T 2 g level need not follow the same temperature profile. What it can happen is at uh, after reaching this white color it will take quite some time to come back to the red color. So, that even if you are decreasing the temperature still it stays white and at a particular temperature cooling down at a particular temperature can bring you red. So, these are nothing this is like a very good app, I mean you know, some these sort of app, you know behavior you can apply to something which which may be let us say I mean it could be let us say what I said for money card your ATM card it could be for other display device lot of other things you can you can do. So, display device for example, it is here you just sign the light. So, it is getting heated thereby so red color or let us say purple color it is coming white color even if you cool down significantly this white color may not go back to red very quickly. But then again there are different material which can relax faster that means high spin to low spin it can come down faster. So, you sign the light the whatever we say so whatever writing is there you see it you take off the light it goes back to the white or uh, red or blue or uh, sorry this purple again. So, you can you can basically dictate the term you can tell what you want thereby which complex to pick you want to sign the light from let us say violet color or red color you want to go to white color and you want to stay in white that is one of the mode or if you want to go back right after switching off the laser that can be also possible. So, these are nothing but application in dif different display which you can have based on the synthetic chemistry knowledge. Of course, lot of startup companies and lot of other related application in material science has already come up. These are something of course, you can in future if you are looking for a startup companies. Okay. Something that this knowledge it necess it not necessarily this knowledge it is some other knowledge you read in let us say in fourth year fifth year or sorry fourth year. So, you can you can take it off and try to set up a company from these simple ideas if there is none existing. So, that is I guess that is the knowledge sharing and today we will discuss mainly magnets. Okay. We were discussing magnets in the last class simply magnets are nothing but having or magnetic compounds are nothing but having unpaired electrons that is what we were discussing. More than unpaired electron better the magnetic moment or higher the magnetic moment magnetic values will be high. Okay. If you have paired off all the spin paired off if you have unpaired electron, but those unpaired electron are not unpaired they are pairing it up then you are losing the magnetic values right magnetic moment value. So, all the complexes can potentially therefore, give you magnetic moment because all of them are having electrons. Now, the electron as we were say, say saying electrons are rotating around its own axis that is the spin value it is spinning that is why it can give you one type of momentum okay, or spin mo or spin angular momentum or sorry it is called spin only values for magnetic moment or it can rotate around the orbital. Okay. There is a nucleus surrounding it the electrons are rotating. 
So, these are the two types of motion that can give you magnetic moment, but what we are saying usually you do not have to worry about the orbital component only the spin only value good enough, because ligands are restricting the electrons because they are overlapping effectively restricting the electrons to rotate around the orbital. So, therefore, since the electrons cannot really valence electron mind you not the inner electron valence electron not effectively able to rotate around its own orbit or rotate along its orbit you end up getting only spin component only spin magnetic moment value you get. Okay. Now, also we were trying to tell you that some cases you have to have spin value plus some orbital contribution. Why is that? That is simply because those whenever one orbital to another orbital transition is possible I guess last class we were trying to discuss. So, let us say d x y to d y z to d x z these transitions are allowed transition, because by rotating just 90 degree you can interconvert these orbital. Therefore, you can see there is a magnetic component let us say from x y direction to a, a x z direction. So, thereby there is a some some sort of magnetic contribution on those z direction. It is it is not necessarily ligand is holding the electron completely, it is retarding it, it is preventing it, but not 100 percent. The moment electron can transfer from one orbital to another orbital that means the direction changes x y direction to x z direction, z direction some component will be arising that is the one going to give you the orbital contribution. I okay, will come back to that again. Okay. Let me tell you again simply electron can spin therefore, magnetic moment values can come out of it, but opposite spin can cancel each other as we were trying to say. Okay. Overall I guess um, overall we in terms of mathematical calculation we can have this equation where, where essentially you are keeping your molecules in a magnetic field and that, that magnetic field is going to be your uh, H. So, in let us say this is the magnetic field of H here you are keeping the compound right. So, how much magnetization or how much effect this molecule is going to feel that is dependent on the magnetic field that H plus its characteristics its its nature what can, can it be magnetized pretty easily that is the term called I. Okay. So, any species kept in a magnetic field is going to feel the field itself plus its inherent behavior that will try to make it magnetized. So, that is the I component. Now, so intensity of magnetization how quickly it can it can or how how greatly it can orient with respect to that magnetic field. Okay. Now, if you do the math, so B by H if you divided divided by H B by H will be 4 phi I by I by H right. This term is called this kappa or the magnetic susceptibility. Okay. So, this is the term kappa is the magnetic susceptibility. Now, from there you can do the following math simply there is kappa by rho which is the density of the species density of the molecule that will be the gram molar uh, gram sus magnetic susceptibility multiply that with molecular weight that will be molar molar susceptibility. So, this I by H term you divide it by rho simple it is density of the molecule you get chi g or x this uh, magnetic susceptibility gram magnetic susceptibility. This term you multiply by molecular weight you get molecular 
or um, sorry, this molar susceptibility. Okay, this is just simple math. You have this equation divide by h, you get i by h, which is kappa. Divide kappa by rho, that is going to be your um, gram susceptibility or mass susceptibility. Mass susceptibility multiply by molecular weight, you are going to get this molar susceptibility. It's something I think you have studied before. Now, once you have that molar susceptibility, that is corresponded with the magnetic moment value. This is the simple equation. Now, from there, you can get the magnetic moment value of a compound, right. Of course, mu you can calculate what it is coming, it has a temperature component. So, what it tells you is the temperature is going to affect your magnetic moment value. We are going to see how it is affecting. The magnetic moment value is the one we were talking, it has two components, okay. That spin component and the orbital component, okay. Now, this magnetic moment value can give you the idea about the complex itself what it is made of, how many unpaired electron it has. This is a experimentally measurable quantity. You can measure the magnetic moment value and thereby you can get crucial information about your let us say unknown compound. Okay. It can give you number of unpaired electrons present, high spin, low spin, it can give you the spectral behavior, it can, it can also tell you something about the structure of the complex. So, what all we are saying is if you have an unknown complex, you can measure the magnetic moment value of it and thereby you can try to tell what that compound is made of, right. How the equation is, equations are we have seen in here, these are two different equation, one is this one, another is this one. As long as you know the relationship between these two equation, you are good to go. This is simple connection between them, you just figure it out between these two equation, this equation and that equation, okay. They are connected by this kappa i by h and then kappa divided by your uh, density will give you molar susceptibility and then multiply by molecular weight. You just look two minutes, it should be clear. Right. So, based on these equation it is expected usually one of the math is given. Usually we get one question at least based on these two equation. They are interrelation, some value will be given and thereby you have to calculate the magnetic moment let us say. Okay. Usually also in uh, I think uh, maybe it is in the tutorial question as well, I forgot. Okay. Fine. Now, we, we were talking in the last class as well and today itself also, we have two component, orbital component and spin component. The resultant one is going to be the mu total, right. But this orbital component is going to be nullified or it will be diminished, decreased, not necessarily you can prevent it 100 percent, okay that is the orbital contribution. Usually we do not have to worry about orbital contribution, you can calculate just mu spin only. The equation for calculating this mu total by taking this orbital and spin contribution is this one, okay, all right. Now, what happens to so, the capital S, this S is number of unpaired electron, their spin. If it is 3 unpaired electron, half plus half plus half, 3 by 2. L, L will that will come, come will come for the lanthanide section. It is the summation of usually ML, right. So, for d orbital, it is let us say plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. We will come for the lanthanide from there, we will discuss. Anyway, you do not have to calculate for d block element you usually do not have to calculate the L values. You can only plug this equation for the S value, okay, okay, all right. So, we have two component, 
once again only spin value is good enough what you nail it down further is root of n multiplied by n plus 2 n n times n plus 2 root of that that gives you for one unpaired electron two unpaired electrons three unpaired electrons four and five and so on what would be the magnetic moment value so by knowing how many unpaired electron is there pretty much you can be confident what will be the experimental or experimentally observed magnetic moment for pretty much a lot of cases now so that's the magnetic moment value but often what you see is at the end of it the experimentally observed magnetic moment value is slightly higher sometimes lot higher how those are coming from or where they are coming from that is due to the assumption that this component does not exist okay we bring them back to explain it okay so when you need to when the orbital angular momentum that mu l part comes in okay it comes in when you have degenerate orbital we have degenerate orbital if d orbital was not splitted then this component would have been high if five d orbitals were degenerate then interconversion would have been possible much easier or five of the or five of the orbital it can interconvert so electron can interconvert between 1 2 3 4 5 so therefore the orbital uh, sorry, sorry orbital angular momentum value would have been higher since in octahedral field for example or tetrahedral field it is splitted into t2g eg or et2 we are going to get little less orbital angular momentum value okay compared to unsplitted d orbital right now of course interconversion leads to some sort of new directionality xy to xz z is new xz to yz y is new right so that is the one contributing for your little bit more momentum right now just degeneracy is not good enough why because you should be able to interconvert also for example dx2 y2 um, okay this is the last warning okay it's a big class it's if it was a small class i would not have mind too much because i know what exactly goes on okay please have some respect okay so what we are trying to have is t2g eg eg dx2 y2 and dz2 by no way you can interconvert therefore in eg you from eg you cannot get any orbital angular momentum value only possibility is t2g because the dxy dyz dxz are interconvertible okay of course if they are having same spin you cannot interconvert right so let's say t2g3 one 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 all three of them are having same spin you cannot interconvert fair enough so inter there they should be similar shape in size dxy dyz dxz are the same shape in size there should they should be interconvertible and the orbital must not contain electrons of identical spin that's the criteria for getting some orbital angular momentum is it clear so t2g1 you can get orbital angular momentum because t2g1 that one unpaired electron can be either in dxy dyz or dxz three different orientations are possible t2g2 is possible t2g3 is not possible t2g4 once again is possible t2g5 is possible t2g6 is not possible okay in t uh, 2 g 3 all three are having same spin from where to where you will interconvert see t 2 g 1 means dxy to dyz you can go interconvert means one one means they have to exchange if there is no scope for exchanging how will you exchange okay same spin t 2 g 3 means three unpaired spin in the same direction spin multiplicity same direction they will be having you so only so far as you see only t2g3 will not be able to give you yeah 
Okay. Yeah. That, that I am coming. Yeah. Next slide. So, that interconversion will be having some contribution not as great as let us say T 2 G to T 2 G configuration. Conf so, T 2 G to T 2 G conf I mean uh, interchange will give you little bit more orbital angular momentum value compared to E g to T 2 G conversion that is that is what the next slide is all about. So, d y z, d x y and d x z these three orbitals are interconvertible no problem ok. Over here that is the interconversion is shown. So, you just so you just rotate by 90 degree you will be able to rotate d x y. So, this plane to that plane to that or whatever these three different plane you can see. Now, as you see d z 2 and d x 2 y 2 are not interconvertible. So, from purely from E g orbital just E g orbital itself cannot give you any orbital angular momentum value. So, the you know the spin only value is only co considered ok. Now, of course, what um, what your friend trying to say is d x y is convert can be converted to d x 2 y 2 yes and thereby once you can convert d x 2 y 2 into d x y then you can inter convert d x y to d x z d y z and so on. So, T 2 g E g mixing if you can have then you you will be able to get better orbital angular momentum value, but usually for mixing those energy has to be close enough if the gap is very high that mixing is not going to be possible right ok. So, we, we all hopefully by now understand that it is angular momentum or this orbital angular momentum and spin momentum value are important usually spin on spin only value is good enough, but in some cases you have to talk about orbital angular momentum. Actually that is makes it you know little bit important or interesting otherwise whatever unpaired electron is there you will just end up calculating based on your calculator right. That is not fun of course, the exam questions are asked at least one two or so on orbital angular momentum. Okay, when orbital angular momentum is there. Okay. Now, so this is the same thing what I was trying to say D 1 can have these three different contribution for example, titanium 3 plus is having D 1 electronic configuration and therefore, orbital contribution will be there. For example, D 2 vanadium 7 plus. So, how the question would be let us say a complex is given where vanadium is sorry vanadium 3 plus vanadium 3 plus and you are asked whether it will have any orbital angular momentum or not or in some other form it will be asked indirectly, but mostly definitely I can assure you at least one question will be there on orbital angular momentum at least if not two ok. So, there there you can have two different or three different configuration orbital contribution possible yes ok. Now, this is something you do not have to remember, but you can justify you can go through each of those one by one. So, d 1 orbital angular momentum possible yes you can perhaps not read from here that is ok. So, what we have tried to do here is given you the complex different complex and their electronic configuration d 1 d 2 d 3 d 4 up to d 10 and then you have to write down T 2 G E G electronic configuration 